Welcome to Coffee with the Sarlows. We are your hosts of the show, Karen and Kelly Sarlow. Whether you're struggling with grief or you just need answers, we connect you with spirit to find relief, clarity, and direction in life. We can help you move forward. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Good morning. I'm all right. Good. I'm stiff. Right. Are you going to tell everybody what you did? I ran a Spartan race. Like this princess ran a Spartan race. (laughs) Tell them. I did great. I completed the course, which was one win. I tried every obstacle but one. And there were 20 obstacles? There were 17. Okay. Um, Yeah. And I had a fucking blast. I went with like all of my best friends. And it was just, it was a complete like shove outside my comfort zone. And it was great. Mm, Good for you. And I'm sipping coffee and just happy to listen to a story this morning because my body's like, hey, we did a lot yesterday. Yeah. So do you, like, are you feeling, like, are you stiff and sore? No, because I was on a fucking great workout program. I'm just fatigued, which is great. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Our story today is about a woman and I'm going to make up her name, of course. We're going to call her Lottie. And she's super organized. So at the very beginning of the session, after I get through consent, she says, Karen, I know exactly what I want. I'm just here for medium. I've got one hour booked. She says, I want three people. I want them in a particular order. And she says, because of what they mean to me and what I'm looking for. She says, I want my dad, my brother, my sister. And she says, you have the entire hour. I'm here to listen. I will validate as necessary. Yeah. And she says, "Um, you go. So her dad comes in and says, I am totally prepared. And he says, I want to explain a couple of things to you, Karen, and then tell Lottie everything. He says, I want you to explain to her that since I passed, and I've been passed for many, many years, I've done a lot of work to understand who I was on earth. And he says, and my relationship with her, so I am here to apologize. And he says, and to acknowledge how I raised her. And I'm hoping that she's going to be able to place that into her current relationships and the things that are going on in her life currently and all through her past. And he says, so the first thing I want to say is I totally groomed my daughter. Mm -hmm. He said, I groomed her because I wanted her to be a nun. He said, I had a belief. And he says, now I want to acknowledge that Not all people in religions have this belief. He says, I did. He says, I'm not saying all Catholics have the same belief. He said, but I had the belief that if I had a daughter that was a nun or a son that was a priest, that I would automatically get into heaven. You have no fucking business having children if that is how you approach raising children. That is disgusting. Yeah. That is, I will conceive to have control over another person's life so that I can, there's so many things wrong with this. I've got three fingers up, but that's like enough to just solidify my version of what hell would look like and the type of people that belong there. Yeah. And he, so he says, I, I really wanted one of my kids to be a nun or a priest. And he said also, because it gives you prestige in the community. Yeah. Like, this is the non-religious equivalent of someone being like, I love to travel, so I'm going to have a child, and I'm going to make sure they become a pilot so I can fly wherever I want. Oh, that's... like Or a doctor. Like, fuck you. Yeah. Or, or like, a doctor, right? Anything. Yeah. Like, you be a doctor so that you can take care of me and all my medical problems, and then I'm going to eat like shit, and and I'm not going to exercise so that it's your problem. So you're also saying this father was non yeah living outside integrity yes. but bought a free ticket with his nun daughter yes fuck that's terrible yes and this is what he admits to her and this is this is like tenfold worse than deciding that you're going to marry someone of a certain profession so that you oh, can have yeah. benefits like yeah. it's one thing to pick another adult and be like i mean honestly if i had my pick i'd marry a massage therapist or a chiropractor wouldn't i Right? Because it's like, that's where I spend most of my money in my health. <laughs> and it's like, that that's one version of not very nice. And then to actually raise a kid and be like, you're going to serve my purpose in this world. Yeah. Yeah. 
So he he owns it, Kelly. He says, this is what I did. He said, and I, I groomed her. And he said, I, this, because of these reasons. And he said, and then once she became, I think he said around 16 or 17, she started dating. Uh-oh. And he realized at that point, oh, I'm not going to get my nun. Men or women? <laughs> or they? Actually, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no idea. Either way, I'm thrilled. <laughs> and so he just says, she, she, she showed me that she was interested in having a partner and having children and having the life she wanted. And he said, so I just realized, well, then I, you know, I have no interest in her. Oh, so he said, so then I literally really just disengaged. He said, and I, I wasn't really engaged in her life anyway, other than in the grooming that I wanted. But he said, once I realized she wasn't going to do it, he said, then, you know, it was like, yeah, come for Thanksgiving and Christmas and dinners and yeah, I'm going to talk to you and stuff. But, but I have like, no use for you. I'm not interested so much anymore. And so she feels, this is what he describes, she feels his pulling away. She feels it. Yeah. And so he says, I want to acknowledge that she felt that. Because now in life, when she feels someone pulling away, she second guesses herself. She doesn't really have the confidence and the self-esteem to understand that, no, she's right. So can I explain this for people yeah. who, who might be listening and going, I don't really understand why you're making that point? There would be confusion, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, there would be confusion because on, on some level, no matter how logical and intelligent we are, and well-educated, I'll say as well, um, there's a part of us as children, which we all are, that needs to believe our parents love us, needs to believe our parents like us. And so when we feel the pulling away, when, when we witness reality and it goes against what we need to believe about our parents, that they love us, that they want us, that we are lovable, we have to find some reason that defies the logic that we're experiencing to believe they do love us, mm -hmm. right? And so when we get used to that patterning of, well, it feels like they've pulled away, it feels like they've withdrawn, it feels like they're disinterested in me, but no, he's my dad. He must love me. Mm -hmm. he, mu he must love me, mm -hmm. right? And that's the line that usually comes up. Then we have to start to believe that this behavior must be love. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then, so he then says to Lottie, and this will explain her marriage. Of course. And he goes, so I'm, I want to come right out today and I want to say flat out that I groomed her. I want to say flat out that I am so sorry. I want to also acknowledge that I died without ever admitting it. And I had plenty of opportunity before I died to say to her what I did. And he said, there was no way that I was going to do that. So he said, I want to show up today to say all of these things to her so that she can piece all these things together. And he says, but I also want to acknowledge that she has figured a lot of this out on her own because she is trying to figure out her life. But I want to acknowledge it. And he said, I really want to acknowledge that she's done enough work to understand that she doesn't want to be me. Hmm. And so she's been living her life looking for her integrity. She's been trying to figure out what the phrase is, love yourself means. <laughs> and she's actually been trying to love herself. And he said, in spite of the fact that her mother and I did not model any of this for her. So he said, I really want to tell her that I'm really proud of her that I love her now because I am capable of loving her on the other side. And he said, and she's in a place that she's not going to say, well, it's too late now. She's in a place of saying, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I'll take it and I'll take it today. And I'll th thank you. So, and this is why she's here. This is why she's here. He says, so you go ahead and tell her all of that. So I told Lottie and she said, this is super spot on. She says, and it is gratifying. Like you can't imagine to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. She says, it is so incredible to sit here with you. She goes, okay, 
I got what I wanted from my dad for today, but I might be back, Karen. <laughs> yeah, that's the, like, you've given her clarity that she's not crazy for what she has felt and, and witnessed her whole life. You gave her clarity about her dad and his behavior. Mm-hmm. You gave her relief that she is in fact loved and seen mm-hmm. and that and that her dad really truly is capable of love as a soul, maybe wasn't as a human. Mm-hmm. And then direction, even if direction is just to hear that you're on the right path. Yeah. Right? It doesn't mean that when you come to a psychic or a medium that they're going to say, hey, you need to change course entirely. Like direction can just be, hey, good job, keep going. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be the only time that you hear those things. Yes. We need multiple versions of validation throughout life as practitioners, but also as human beings. Yeah. Right? Like this oh, yeah. is, life's a fucking marathon. Yeah. You need to hear good job, keep going more than once. <laughs> Just like you did on your Spartan race. Oh, go on. More than once. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then she says to me, I'd like my brother. And he comes in and he goes, okay, I've been passed for quite a while as well. Not as long as my dad, but quite a few years. And he says, much like my father, I was incapable of loving on earth. But he says, but I want to start by saying that I was so much older than her that I wasn't around a lot when she was growing up. I was raising, I, I was married and raising my own kids. And he said, and I, I really wanted to create financial security. So I was very focused on making money. I was very focused on how my house looked on the outside for people to believe I was a success. I was very focused on controlling my children <laughs> and my wife. And he goes, I want, I researched a shit ton. He says I was very much into academics and I believed that if I was really knowledgeable about things and I had an answer and I could fix things, that that made me a good person, that that made me a lovable person. And he said, Karen, he said, I had my own whole shit show going. And he said, but not once did I consider connection, love, um, getting to know somebody, uh, compassion, empathy, integrity. He said, and all of the things that I just said are my sister. And I was the opposite of my sister. So I looked at her and he says, I'm going to say it clear out today. I thought she was an absolute life failure. And he said, I stayed married. She went through a divorce. Failure. He said, I just saw everything as success, fail. And he said, and by, I'll say, maybe some other people's standards too. He goes, but those were definitely mine. He said a lot of those standards were also very much my mom and dad's. And he said, so, and he said, I've got, we've got other siblings that saw life the same way. So he said, you know, we were kind of like on an island, so to speak, a group of people that have the same beliefs. And he said, so I wasn't interested in her. So I really just thought she just didn't know how to live her life. She irritated me with all of this shit. He said, truth be known, I just, I hated her. He says, I didn't like her. He said, I saw her integrity and honesty and love as weakness. And then when she went through a divorce, I went, see, I'm right. She tried love. She tried honesty. She tried integrity in her relationship and it got her a divorce. That's not good. And that created financial hardship for her. That's not good. That's another failure. He says, I just looked at her and saw failure, failure, failure. Every freaking thing she did to me was just like, (laughs) her life sucks. And my life is awesome. And he said, but now I'm on the other side and I'm looking at her life and my life and I'm going, oh my God, how could I be so wrong? How could I be so off? And he says, and I'm not trying to come through and say that you don't need money or education Mm -hmm. or all of these things I valued. He says, you do. And he says, but if I look at all of that, she's actually got all of those things too. But she had a balance of all of those things. But I refuse to see the things that she had that I had. But I refuse to see them because I wanted 
to make my focus, a hyper focus on those things, the right hyper focus. But I was out of balance. And she was finding balance. And I was like, I I can't have that. Because that would make me wrong. And I can't be wrong. And he says, so I've learned how that attitude of I can't be wrong alienated me from my own wife and my own children. So a lot of the looking at my past life as her brother has required me to also look at my relationship with this particular sister in terms of our soul contracts, where I never understood how big of a soul contract I had with her until I died, because she was actually showing me so many of the things that were healthy in life and my goals and my life purpose, and I was shitting all over them and shitting all over her in the process. And he says, so I'm here to say, holy cow, Lottie, am I ever sorry? I enjoy the moment where I can see in your brain if you're choosing to swear or not. <laughs> Sometimes you are like loose-lipped with your, your swears and it's great because it's our show and I know that people laugh because they give us feedback <laughs> and then I see like, oh no, she's choosing a PG word. <laughs> it's just funny. Okay. Your editor and producer doesn't care. I don't beep them out. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so I I told Lottie all of his messages, and she sat calmly and listened, and she went, wow, she goes two out of three. She goes, this is really more than I hoped for. She goes, Karen, I can't even begin to tell you. And I said, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> I said, I, I can understand. And well, she, not really. She flat out told you what she wanted. She wanted three people. Yeah. She did hope. Okay. Just okay. saying. Yeah, yeah. She put okay. it out there. She asked for what she wanted, and that's a big yeah. fucking deal given how she was groomed and raised. Right. Per- Thank you for pointing it out. Then she said to me, um, can we move on? Um, I only have about 20 minutes left, and I still would like you to connect to my sister, please. Go open again. And I said, Okay. So I went back to the spirit world and her sister showed up and said, okay. She goes, so I've been dead for several years too. (laughs) She says, but not as long as my dad and my brother. But she says long enough that I've been able to work on myself. And she says, so I want to come forward and say to Lottie, Lottie, holy shit. I was a massive people pleaser. And she goes, but we were all raised to people please either our parents or society, or religion, or the combination of all of it. Always at the expense of our family. Always at the expense of our own growth and our own soul. This is something we were all taught to do, to be very disconnected from ourselves. And she goes, so I'm here to say that I was very financially dependent on my family. I had different things in my life where My husband and I didn't make enough money. We were really financially dependent on help from our brothers and sisters and um, from our parents and his, my husband's parents and his siblings. We really struggled. Even though we both worked, we just didn't have high paying jobs. We just struggled. So we just felt that we couldn't stand up for ourselves. We just felt we could never individuate, but we didn't want to admit that. (laughs) We didn't want to admit it because we were adults. We wanted to look like we were grown up. So we felt my husband and I felt more like we were playing grown up than we actually were grown up. And she says, and I died like that. So I would never even have admitted that on earth. But she says, I wasn't nice to Lottie because Lottie was trying to get healthy. She was trying to see some of these things. She was sitting and working more in integrity. And I was totally the freaking opposite because if I went into any of that integrity, then I would not get the financial help. I would not get any of the other support my family gave me, which was a ton, like helping babysit my kids, like just a whole bunch of stuff. Renoing my house. She says, like, my family helped me with everything. And if I didn't do what my siblings and my parents expected of me and didn't toe that line and be part of that that group, I was afraid that they were going to treat me the way they treated Lottie. So she says, so I watched the way my family treated her, and I went, I can't have that. 
Um, and I really believe that. So I abused my sister. She says, I was unkind to her. She says, very much, Karen. And she says, so, and right up to my death. She says, it never changed. I never acknowledged what I did. She says, I died in all of this stuff because I still wanted my family around me right to my death to take care of me. And she says, I'm here to say to Lottie, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry that I didn't change my career. I didn't go get a different education, perhaps. She said, there was all kinds of things I could have done. She goes, I didn't do any of them. I just stayed in that situation. And she says, now when I look back at my life, I think, why didn't I just write a resume and put it out? Well, that would require you to individuate from your parents. Yeah. And neither the brother nor the sister did that. Yeah. And I still want mommy and daddy's approval. I still want mommy and daddy's quote unquote love. So there's a feeling of I can't. And her sister said that many times. Yes. So she said, um, I just want to tell Lottie that I love her. She says, it's soul love, though. She says, human love, not so much. I was just mad at her. I just, I didn't like her. She said, I just, I didn't want her to be in my life. So I did, I treated her badly. So she would walk away, but she, she wouldn't walk away. So I kept treating her badly. Mm hmm so we had this experience of, I'll be nice to her, I'll be mean to her. And she says, it's, it's terrible. She says, I really abused her. And she says, but, I, and now I want to acknowledge what I did. Okay, so can I, can I spell this out though? Yeah. So like the, 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 I don't like her would very much come from, she's present and, and in putting in my face the things that I want to do for myself, but don't feel like I can. Um, or don't know how to do for myself, right? So there would be mm. anger and frustration. There would be resentment and jealousy or envy, right? And so I don't want this person in my face stirring up all these emotions. And on top of that, she's rocking the boat in the family. Lottie is not looking like us, sounding like us, walking or talking like us. Mm -hmm. And so she risks creating ruffles in, in the family feathers, right? Mm -hmm. Which might upset mom and dad, which might upset brother, sister, however many other siblings there are. And so I don't want you here rocking the boat because if I'm people pleasing, I'm going to be responsible for every time you ruffle a feather to smooth that out. Yes. Oh, so, yeah. so I'm going to treat you badly so you go away. But like you said, Lottie wouldn't go away. So now here's sister having to preen. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she comes forward that day and she says all of the truth to Lottie and says she's sorry. And again, I look at Lottie and she goes, oh, my God, three for three. She goes, Karen, everything I wanted. She goes, this is like 100% everything that I could hope for. Lottie tells me, much what you said earlier, <laughs> she says, Karen, I finally got acknowledgements of all of the things that I saw in my healthiness that none of them wanted to see because they weren't wearing the same set of glasses as me. So they didn't want to acknowledge and they didn't want to put those glasses on. They didn't want to see anything. And she says, it feels fantastic to me to know that I am healthy to know that I am loving myself and that it's not a cliche for me, that I'm actually doing the work. And she says, so I feel wonderful. She says, I feel healthy. I feel happy. I feel confident. And she says, it's fantastic to know that my dad, my brother, and my sister in the spirit world love me mm -hmm. and that they're proud of all of the work that I'm doing and that the family that's on earth, you know, they are who they are. And she says, and I'm comfortable where I am. And now I look forward to, and I don't mean I'm wishing all of them dead, Karen. She goes, but I look forward to the day when they are on the other side, should any of them die before me, where I can call a medium again, and I can get this type of healing and closure with them. And know that when I'm talking to them now and thinking about them now, I don't have to think about the humans that they were. I can think about the souls that they are. And she says, that just fills my heart. Mm -hmm. 
And she says, and I like the fact that when it's filling my heart, Karen, that that means that I'm actually being healed. Thanks for listening to Coffee with the Sarlows. If you enjoyed the show today, help spread the love with a like, share, or review of the podcast. See you next Saturday with a brand new episode.